Yes. That was not the answer I wanted or needed. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kathy McMahon. I'm the Youth Services Manager at South Memorial Library in Papillion. I pace a lot when I talk, so I apologize if you're one of those visual people that have to watch, you know, the person talking. Because I just, I have adult ADD or can't feel to settle down. But, um, thank you for coming. I know I'm competing with Sally Snyder, and that is like, holy cow, you can't compete with Sally Snyder with her book list. So I, I'm thrilled that all of you guys are here. Um, what we wanted to do today was make it very casual and have a kind of a feedback. We, the four of us, did a collaborative project that we felt was extremely successful on many levels, and we wanted to share that. There is no PowerPoint, there is no Sheila box and handouts. If you would like to pick those up, they're on the back table about the book that we that we used in this collaborative project. This really is a give and take. So if you have questions, we would love for you to raise your hand, or if you have a comment or don't understand the part that we did, um, this is really for us to figure out how we can collaborate better with people that are not within our, our buildings and in our comfort zones. Okay, so here's what we did. My name is Kathy McMahon. Chris Floyd Matthews, he was a sixth grade teacher last year that I collaborated with. He is now currently the fifth grade teacher in the same building. Mrs. Ann Baker is an author that we did a project with. I did a project with her in the building in my library, and then um, Floyd did a project in the, in the building, in his building. And then Sheila Welch is an author that came in from Chicago to be here with us today, so we are very thrilled that she did that. So we're gonna kind of just talk about, we're just gonna tell our story and you can throw out questions or throw out comments if you need to. I forget to pass the mic, and so remind me to pass the mic. Okay. Here's what we did. I was um, told by my director a year ago to go to every single PTA meeting in the district. We have 11 uh, grade schools. Is that right? Four, oh, 14. I know I went to 11, huh? Um, but we don't have to that, right? Uh, I went to 11 grade schools, and um, Anderson Grove is on, is in our school district, but not in our library, you know, the, to get the library card free kind of district, you know what I'm talking about? So, um, I went to, um, the PTA meeting, I, Robin, my director, and Dr. Harvey was there, the principal, she's in the audience, and she, I passed out our business cards and said, I love to do book clubs, I love to come do book talks, can you just get me into one of the rooms, one of the classrooms? The next day, I kid you not, I go to work at 9 o'clock, my email's there, and Mr. Matthews is on, on my email saying, I'm a sixth grade teacher, I would love for you to come and talk to our reluctant boys book club after school. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they can pull boys together after school and they're going to read, oh, I'm, I've got you gone to heaven. So I went there with the idea that I was going to be like the, the knowledgeable person that I am, and they totally blew me on the bottom. They were good for you, I thought. So from that, from that little conversation of passing out my business card to, to Dr. Harley and her passing it on to Mr. Matthews, we decided to take it one step farther after we did the Reluctant Boys Book Club that met after school. Um, and so I went one time, took a bag full of books, book talked with, you know, and most of them had read everything that I had taken, so that was really a good thing. Um, and so then Mr. Matthews had asked Dr. Harley if it was okay if I just came and talked to his classroom. And from there, I can let Mr. Matthews talk. Um, what was really interesting about this is seeing that energy and that um, Kathy brought to our, to our meeting, the boys are really enamored. And at the time, well, that was a good thing. At the time, um, initially, uh, and then another four free teacher I was working with, uh, Mr. Kemple, we were like, oh, we're going to utilize Kathy, we're going to see the boys book club. But seeing the excitement that the young men had, and we kind of posted to them, because um, a lot of the members of the boys book club were members of my classroom. And I go, you know, should we keep this exclusive to boys cook book club or should we, you know, bring this class? Like, oh, she has to meet down in class. They have to see her, you know. So like, okay, so we start out uh, with Spirit Fair was our first novel book that we worked with. And it was really interesting watching how the students interact. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, um, one of our, our district goals is we're really working on comprehension skills, and especially trying to get young men encouraged in, in reading. So 
it seemed it was twofold and everything was working really well. And it's like, you know, I could probably somehow we could tie writing to this. So we started tying our writing curriculum with literary essays and the kids were expounding on their thoughts and it, and it just went extremely well. We had a timeline for this beer book, but the kids are enjoying reading it so much that we actually got that I think it was like a week and a half. We got that early. And the kids were like, well, what are we doing next? And I kind of smiled like I thought that was that. <laughs> and um, oddly enough, Kathy said, you know, um, there was this email I heard about this author that I would like to work with the class. And she was, what do you think? And I'm like, I don't give it to the wife. I'm like, like, we should try this. We should try this. So she's like, you know, just give me a second. Let me let me do some emails and get some communication going. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Literally, the... Um, Later on in that week, um, I find out about Sheila Welch, and uh, we find out there's a book that she has written, and we're kind of working working on, well, how can we do this? And so, as Kathy and I are brainstorming, it's kind of like, it'd be great if we could, you know, work with this author because of this book. She's like, I don't know, we'll find out, we'll find out. And then we get the okay, and then she's like, yeah, I'm willing to do that. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, you want to have myself. I'm talking to my boss, I'm talking to my boss, I'm sure it's okay, because... Um, I realize this is going to take some class time. We just have to make sure that everything's going to fit within the curriculum. And as an educator, what I'm seeing is this is just such a great opportunity for authentic learning. And I ask myself, there's these goals that we have to make sure that we're accomplishing, but how can we make it real for the students? How can we make sure that the students are so engaged with the material that they want to read, that they want to write? And how often do you get an opportunity to work with the actual author of that particular book, and you're going to work with them every week? And that's what we basically did. So I before I and so we we did this for four weeks with Sheila and then basically every week we Skype. The first Skype was rather pretty interesting. And I'm gonna I, I think we probably should kind of go back and forth. So hi, let's give this a shot. Hello. Still working? Yeah. Um yeah, it was very exciting. First of all, um I the book has just come out. It's only two months old. And I had I've written other novels also, but this one was a little bit different. And I actually heard about on the Yalta list, listserv, I don't know, Kathy had put out this email saying something about there was a class that wanted to work with an author. And um, that um, it would sound like it. I just asked, what well, it, it was a special class. I don't they were so smart. You know, they were really brilliant. <laughs> I'm like, that's their teacher, right? <laughs> But anyway, uh, so I wrote to Kathy and said I was interested, and we went back and forth, and then there was this whole thing about whether we would be able to get the book, because it was so new that it was not in a lot of libraries. Um, now it, this program is in all your libraries, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it had come out in, actually about just about a year ago, and this was in the spring. So, um, and I, then they asked about Skyping. I thought, oh, good grief. I'd done this a few times. I'd done it, we went to Ireland, and I did it with my daughter who was in our house. And I had done it with a group of teachers in my daughter's library. She was a school librarian, too. I thought, oh, well, we can do this. And my husband's really very good with technical stuff. And, uh, but then Lloyd spilled coffee on his, <laughs> on his computer. And uh, the, the person who was doing the Skyping, like a different name, it was very confusing for a while. And then one time, my husband was gone. I thought it was like the third Skype, and we couldn't hear each other, and we didn't know what was going on. It was something I had done. We found out later I had turned something off. But my, I said, "Well, write a note." So we started writing notes and holding them up to the screen so they could hear. And we discovered, well, we discovered. I asked my husband this morning if he knew that Skyping. The image is a mirror image. So when you wrote, when we wrote, we can't hear you, it was backwards. <laughs> so we, we adjusted that. But anyway, it was really, really a lot of fun. And it worked out very well. And they also had another author who was involved, Mrs. Ann. Hi, I'm Ann Baker. And I call myself a writer, not an author, because unlike Sheila, I'm not published yet. But, um, I'm one of the writers in this collaborative effort. I've also worked in a library before. Um, in fact, last night I put on my Facebook status that I was going to this, and I said, I think a part of me will always want to be a librarian. And you would not believe how many people liked my status update. They were like, what? Okay, so my background is I 
started writing, well, I finished my first book in 2009, and then I wrote, and that one was about an Iraq war veteran who comes back and is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and this young girl, 13 years old, kind of takes it upon herself um, to fight for him because he gets kicked out of the library and he's homeless, and it's, um, it's just a story of fighting for the veterans who return home. Uh, but I did nothing with it when I was done writing that one. I didn't feel like it was good enough. And then I wrote a book taking place in a school, in a high school. It was a school shooting story after the shooting at Miller South. And then in 2010, I wrote, I started writing Pictures of Natalie, which is the book that um, I was, the book that was part of this collaborative effort. And I'll actually read you, this could be a book flap. The story Pictures of Natalie, written by Ann Baker, is about a teenage boy, Ben, who will do anything for his family, especially when his baby sister Natalie goes missing and Ben goes to great lengths to find his sister. But while traveling on his cross-country journey with his two friends, Logan and Reese, could he possibly build up his courage to find Natalie? And this is a book jacket that was written by one of the students in Mr. Matthews' class during that collaborative effort. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the things that came out of that class in a second. Um, but first, after I wrote this book, Pictures of Natalie, I knew that it was good or decent, but it wasn't great. And I really wanted to get it to that great stage so I could send it to agents and publishers. And so I wandered into the Papillion Library, not a library I go to, but I got a good feel from it. And I met Kathy, and I just walked up to her and I asked, um, I wrote this book, is there any way, do you know any teens who could read this and give me some feedback? And automatically she just lit up and she's like, well, of course I do. And she had several groups in mind. She had her teen reading group, or teen group. And then she also talked about a homeschool group, which we haven't used yet, but she had just so many ideas. And I thought that was really great for a writer to come in, and she just knew right where she could place me. Um, she had lots of readers that were willing to read this book and give us some good feedback before I could send it in to possibly get published. So I went to meet with her teen group. And we met, I would say, about five times. But by the second time, they had finished the book. And they gave me such great feedback. I had critique sheets. So then the kids filled out critique sheets for me. So it was almost like homework. And they did it all. They were awesome. They, were, they just were so thrilled to be a part of this process that they, they just kept coming. They kept meeting with me. Even after we read the book, we had discussed it. Like They just wanted to keep meeting. They gave me ideas for other books. They, I think they also came up with book jacket ideas, just any way to kind of incorporate them into the process of what happens in the writing process. And I think it was a benefit for them, it was a huge benefit for me. And then Kathy hooked me up with Mr. Matthews here, and she said, how would you like to have his class of sixth graders read, read your story? So I went into that classroom, again it was about five or six times, and I met with them I'm either reading aloud to them, or they would read it during class time, and then I would come in, and we would discuss it. And during that time, they did it. They wrote an essay on it. They filled out critique sheets, and they some of them did artwork for the cover of it. And so, in the end, what it gave me, this collaborative effort, was, well, one, they gave me the self-confidence, because having kids read your story. I mean, they're just so excited to be with an author or writer, and they were just so excited, and they gave me some good feedback, things that I've already incorporated into the story. And then for them, I think it really gives them, I mean, it gives them the opportunity to meet an author, to meet a writer, to see the process. I was able to tell them, okay, this is the process. You don't just get published in a day or even six months. It takes possibly a year or longer. This is the editing process. Um, the book that they read, I mean, I, I was able to explain, this is manuscript number two. It's the version number two I had to edit it. So it's teaching them about editing and writing. And it was such a great collaborative effort between kids in a classroom and a writer, being able to tell them this is the process and this is the importance of editing and rewriting and things like that. And so I think overall it was, it was just such a good opportunity for the kids to meet authors and writers and to see that. And I'll stop talking for a little bit, let someone else talk. At the end of the year, um, it just, it, it came, it, 
the, the process of this has kept really taking on um, a different look uh, in the aspect of the things that the kids want to bring to it. Because every time we're again, so when we got done working with Sheila, they're like, we still want to do something with Sheila. We got done working with Pam, and they're like, we still want to do something with Pam. And then they love seeing Kathy all the time. They knew that a year was coming to the end, so they want a, like a cultivating activity. And so we thought, well, you know, your parents have heard about this. They had different parents who kind of contact me, email, say, hey, you know, we've had some really interesting discussions with some of the topics that have come up with these books. And we kind of thought to ourselves, well, why don't we kind of throw like a party? Um, and so, and you know, you have, you, you have to start with parties, and I really get, yeah, we can party, it's cool! So they got really excited about that, and I said, okay, but this is something that we have to orchestrate and we have to put together. So what are some of the things that we've been working on? So it wasn't just even um, the aspects of the things that we were doing with and working with the officers, they also went across, um, across all the academics. So they had uh, some information with the portfolio, the writing portfolios, I know we had some math activities, we had some science activities, and we had set up booths, and we also talked to some of other professionals in our building, um, our speech language pathologist, uh, Mrs. Healy, and then um, our, um, our, our lead coach, um, Ms. Jen Johnson, and then had them have some informational booths for, for, um, for parents also to get different information uh, for junior high, and I think it was some academic things with that. And then we had Kathy come in, and she brought in all kinds of information for what the kids in the summer, volunteering at the library. Um, Sheila was our keynote, so in our gym, our boss was so gracious once again to let us do this, because it did take uh, about the last like, hour and a half of their school day. And we got sponsored by Los Chicago's, we had a bunch of pizza, the kids brought in food, um, parents RSVP. We had 90% uh, response from parents, and we had um, only two kids that were not represented by parents, but they just had conflicts and get there. So we put those kids, um, they got adopted that day by, by other parents. And then um, Anne came in also. So everybody was set up and we had booths. And it was it was a great event just watching the kids take their parents from um, booth to booth basically talking about what they did and get different information and teachers and also to help them as they were moving on to middle school. Um, the fact that we had the contact, especially with Sheila being so far away, and we started the opening 15 minutes per Skyping in the gym with all the parents there, and you can see how intelligent the kids are. And I remember we had one student girl to kind of get them started, and we had the parents come up, and she had done something with that kind of favor, and then had her go ask a question. But they, they finally got to kind of experience and sense what it was, at least a little taste of what their children were doing. Um, you know, the classroom wasn't just the classroom, because the contact that we had made, especially with um, her director sitting around saying, look, um, there are things that we can bring to classroom teachers that possibly classroom teachers would not have access to without the good casting. All this would not have happened. Um, the, the, the winner is truly in this for those students that I worked with last year. And even now, this year, my fifth graders, Kathy, we've already started um, last week, is when we started. So we're starting in October now, so I'm like, oh, this is just going to be amazing because we started you know, three months earlier than last year. But that end of the year event last year was. It was something that I think when the kids saw that totality, they realized, wow, what we did was pretty huge. And even that aspect, I think they finally began to understand that not all students get an opportunity, not one, to work with the published author and then have that type of contact. But then working with them, out, I would call it the author, but I don't know if you didn't say writers, that's what you're saying. Um, work with the <laughs> author or at my office and have contact with the, with the author who can come into the classroom and have a manuscript. I remember. Uh, when Ms. Baker would say, she's like, well, look, you know, this is my manuscript. It will be a book, but like, this is a manuscript. And the kids, I mean, we had 25 copies of that. And we had them in the room. I'm like, no, look, you can't take these home. You know, we got to keep this here. And explaining uh, the, the seriousness behind it. And they really got it. The writing that came from this was still phenomenal. They got copies. We made sure that um, both the authors got copies of literary essays, what the kids were saying. And, the, the aspect of the confidence that really came into my students and the, and the writing voices that came in from this type of reading and interaction with the kids visually, I don't know off the top of that, but it was really great. It was, as an educator, this was just something I'm very proud to be a part of and we hope that we can continue this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I want to tell you about when Ann came into the library the day I was sitting at my desk, and this is really important because you know, as children and young adult librarians, we really protect our kids, and so Ann came up and said, do you know any teens that I can talk to? And I'm thinking first, I thought, no, she's not talking to any of my kids. I don't know who this woman is, and she's not getting that coming close. 
that's in one of our spheres. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'll ask the teams, I'll ask the teams in my team, um, activity group, uh, board if they wanted to even do this. And they were all over. They absolutely loved it. In fact, she has another one out that we've only given them like the first two chapters of, and about four of them email me about every day, when is she going to bring the next set? When is she going to bring the next set? And then the part about when we were in Ms. Matthews' class and Anne brought her manuscript, that was a great time for me as a public librarian to talk about copyright and fair use and plagiarism and all that stuff that they hear in the school library, but they tone out. You know, like, oh, no offense to school libraries, but I mean, they just, you know, after a while, you just you hear that year after year, and they don't really, they can't really apply. This was applicable to what they needed to know, that they couldn't take the manuscript out of the building. This didn't belong to them. They couldn't mess with it. They couldn't share it. It, it was, you know, property, intellectual property owned by, by Anne, and that was huge. That was a huge learning lesson for all of them. And they, they kept asking, well, what happens if it gets published? And what happens? I said, well, then you've read it. You know, you'll have gone through the whole steps with them. It was a huge, huge successful project, considering we, we did it by emails. We literally set it up one day, and I came in, brought the books, we read. And then from there, we did the next thing. And from there, it just worked really well. And I think if we would have tried to structure it more, I would, we would have fallen flat on our faces, but because all of these professionals were willing to, you know, be flexible and, you know, let us do what we needed to do, what we all do best, um, it worked really well. Uh, we just, and we were, we felt so comfortable about it that when we finished in May with that big um, um, educational activity, which we just called a party, <laughs> we totally got those sixth graders like, oh, and they thought it was so cool that they were going to party, like, like they know what that is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Repeat the question, oh, please. Question. Um, I had said that I had gotten into 11 schools when I had passed out my business card to the PTOs, and no, I had not been asked to do anything else with any of the um, other libraries last year. But I, I don't take no for an answer very well. I have issues with that. So I emailed them all back, and instead of going to the, to the PTO people, I went straight to the principal. And I'm now in seven. So it, it worked, um, it just needed to. And what's been really nice is Dr. Harvey invited um, um, Dr. Black, the superintendent, to come. And from there, we're now taking it to um, Anderson Grove became our, our business partner. So now we can do some really cool things with them. And this year now, we're taking it one more step with this um, Anderson Grove with the group. We're going to do Anderson Grove night at the library. So they're going to go get fast food at one of our, one of our partners. And then they're going to come in, and if they don't have cards, they'll get cards. And our friends group is going to, you know, put out food for them and all that kind of stuff. And it's just a way for them to get into that building because they know who I am. They they totally know when I walk in the building, you know, oh she's here, that kind of stuff. But they don't know they don't know what I have to offer, you know, a zillion DVDs and four hundred thousand books and all of that stuff. They don't they don't see that because they only see me in my bag. And I think it's really important that they that they put the connection that the public library and the school library and the classroom teacher and the principal all get that this is important and, and I'm very passionate about that so I, I, we're working on that and we're going to use Anderson Globe as our pilot school number one because Dr. Harley will allow me to do that and number two Mr. Matthews can sell it from the inside out and we can just totally we think we're going to totally rock it and it's going to happen in March so we're really excited because they'll have had probably four books by then um, probably four books by then by, by the ones that we have picked and we just think it's just one more one more way we can grow this. And then once we get the um, Anderson Grove Night at the Library done, Dr. Harley's been nice enough to say that 
that she will go and tell the other principals so then we can build this in the other schools. Because I think it's important that, that we make that connection, that we make that collaborative effort. I just, they have the audience, I have the stuff, why wouldn't we be put together? I, I, I don't understand. Anything else? I mean, any comments, questions? Do you have any kids that they want to read? Absolutely not. <laughs> I picked books I wanted to read. Um, I picked Touching Spirit Bear. Um, yeah. I picked Touching Spirit Bear as the first one because I, I think that is a wonderful sixth grade read about anger and how to deal with just, you know, middle school emotions. And I just love that book. So Mr. Matthews and I, I mean, I had read it for years. And, yeah. And then uh, Mr. Matthews read it and he's like, oh, I think this is going to be pretty good. So we picked that one. And then when Sheila had got, you know, when I was emailing Sheila, that was the next book we picked. Um, this year we have we have a list of 12. We know we can't get 12 done, and, and none of them are picked because they're an award-winning book. None of them are picked. They're just picked because of content. Um, bullying's big this year, so we wanted to do something on bullying. Um, we want to do something on. Um, we want to do a Patricia McLaughlin book because she's she's an extremely good writer. Where we can pull in Ann and Ann, we can show Patricia's writing as opposed to Ann's writing, which are totally different but totally appropriate. Um, we have so many ideas. We, we know we can't get it all done, but we just, so to answer your question, no, we didn't want to pick books. <laughs> okay, anything else? I mean, we would love to know if you guys have tried this. Um, so just at the mention where we're talking here, do we have the um, Yeah, the, they are outside our city boundaries for a free library card. And I don't know all the technical stuff about free library card things because so I don't want to know. They will have they will have to purchase a library card, which is forty dollars for a year for us. But what I, but what my and it's really I don't get my jacket. It's not really the point of getting the card. It's the point of getting those kids into that building so they can come to program. Once we get them into programming, the cards just come naturally because they see the stuff on the shelves and they they beg their moms to get cards. So it you know we play the game like everybody else does and we make it and we make it work. I want them in the building so they know that they don't only have a school library to go to, that they have us to use as a resource, and that we have really cool, fun, and neat things. And because since I've got older kids, because he's been in intermediate grades, I can tap into those kids for both summer reading volunteers. So I am always looking for a way to make my life easy. So it's really hard. He fell about me or something. <laughs> anyway, so anything else? I'm totally fine. I'm sure. I can't get <laughs> I just want to further stress the, the benefits of this collaborative effort. I know for myself, as when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, I would have loved to be in school and working with an author or to, to see that writing process. Because as, as, at that age, I wanted to be an author, and you didn't always have that opportunity to meet published authors and to work with them. And so I think that's a great opportunity. And then using the library to have that as the middle person, I mean, that's just, that's great. And to, to get the kids in there, into the library, to have groups, meeting with authors, meeting with writers, is so great. And I think it's so important for kids. And some of those future ideas, if this is something you want to do, if, you're, if you are a public librarian and you bring in a writer, and if you can't find a published author, especially if they, they won't do it for free and you don't have the money, you could find unpublished authors in your area. I'm sure there's lots and they probably will do it for free. And you could have them not only do something like this where kids read your book or read the writer's book, but you can have the writer invite them in to do a writer's workshop. Get some teams together who want to be writers and have that writer lead a workshop or have them just